So in this video, we're going to take a look at the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. Uh, and so just uh, highlight a couple of things here about this uh, parable, some backgrounds and how it fits into uh, Jesus' ministry in the gospel context and then how uh, it's generally interpreted. So a few things then, first of all, about the historical context. Uh, we'll go ahead and read the parable first. Uh, you will have it uh, here. So he said, uh, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. All right, so a couple of things then about the background of this. The judge says uh, that he has no fear of God, um, means that really he has no real interest in justice because uh, a judge, according to Leviticus 25, uh, uh, judges are supposed to uh, fear God. And so fearing God would indicate that he, he, was, he did have a concern to make sure that God's law uh, was, um, was enforced. Uh, and so in that he has no respect for anyone uh, suggests that uh, instead he has contempt for people. So when he is um, not fearing God nor cared what people thought. So he doesn't really feel beholding, as it were, to anybody's opinion about him. And so someone thinks that he is an unfair judge or an unjust judge he doesn't really care he has he has his position now he probably does care that certain people um think that he is doing a good enough job or he could possibly be removed we have to try and understand a little bit how judges are placed uh and again we try to uh understand what kind of judge this is most likely, we are thinking about a, a Jewish judge, uh, so I'm assuming that it's a Jewish judge and not a, some type of, of a non-Jewish or a Gentile judge who's going to be heard by this, uh, by this widow. We would assume as well that Jesus has in mind a, a Jewish widow uh, and that he's not making comments about a Gentile uh, widow going before a Gentile judge. But of course, all of these are assumptions. There's certainly a lot of details uh, that are left out of this very short parable. Um, in Ben Sirach 35, 12 through 7, uh, God is portrayed as a just judge who hears the supplications of the widows. And so that's kind of interesting, especially as we begin to see in Luke's gospel itself, the uh, allegorization process of how to uh, think about this particular um, uh, judge and or think about this particular parable and what lessons we're supposed to take from it. Uh, I do think that it is unusual uh, for a woman to appear in a Jewish court, if that's what this is, if this is before a Jewish uh, judge. Um, I would think in a patriarchal society that primarily um, men would go before a judge and make a case for some kind of intervention uh, in a situation. Uh, the fact that this is a widow means she has no husband, um, and um, we might assume she probably also has no male sons or no brothers or um, uncles or any other males who are able to go and plead her case bef before a judge. So uh, seeing this uh, woman appearing before him um, uh, is interesting. But again, we have to be careful that we're not, we're not sure if she actually goes to court because it just says that she keeps coming to him because it may not be that she goes into a court situation. It may be that she knows where the judge is, she sees the judge, and she keeps coming up to the judge to hear her hear her case. So again, a female approaching a male is again something 
uh, especially out in public, can be something of a potential unusual situation. So um, I guess what's also important to kind of keep in mind uh, is how does this story kind of fit with the way in which widows are presented um, throughout the, the Bible. And there are a number of stories that uh, about widows, uh, and very oftentimes we're, we're kind of inclined to think of widows as weak, but very often widows in biblical stories, biblical accounts, are shrewd, um, clever, crafty, resourceful. Uh, and so before we jump to the conclusion that this is a poor, oppressed widow here, um, we might be thinking, like other widows in biblical stories, uh, she is doing what she knows needs to be done or is likely to be effective uh, in order to um, get what it is that she wants. So um, we are able, like in a number of parables uh, of Jesus, uh, to get into the mind of the judge, who what's once again known as interior monologue where he says to himself. So uh, we see this with the rich fool. We see this with the prodigal son. Um, we might see this possibly even with the Pharisee and the tax collector. Um, so this interior monologue is where they're talking to themselves. And when that happens, though, in Luke's gospel, uh, generally the character are meant to be seen as a negative one. So um, people talking to themselves, uh, we're seeing something of how they're planning to do something. This is also in the parable, we'll find it in the parable about the a shrewd manager uh, who finds that he's going to be you know, cast out from taking care of the books for his, his master. Uh, so these uh, interior monologues are a clue that the person that we're dealing with here is uh, thinks of themselves as crafty, thinks of themselves as shrewd, uh, but there's something not to be trusted about this person. And so the fact that the judge is called neither fearing God nor care for anybody else also allows us to know that the judge is probably seen in more negative light here. The expression um, bothers me. Um, you know, this widow keeps bothering me. Uh, literally causes me labor, uh, also appears in the parable of the friend at midnight and also gets to the heart of what's the concern here. You know, he doesn't see that she has a legitimate case. He doesn't think that it is a case worth his, his time or what, uh, to, to hear, um, but uh, he is being bothered uh, by her, and this bothering is an inconvenience to him. We also have the expression that uh, he needs to do something. Um, I will see that she gets justice, if that's what she's wanting. Uh, she wants to be uh, avenged um, uh, for what has happened to her. Um, so she's seeking some kind of justice, but maybe it's some kind of vengeance, really. Uh, a woman on uh, out for vengeance against her adversaries, against her, her enemies. Maybe the judge sees straight through it, you know, that, you know, this is a woman who uh, is out for vengeance. This is not really a justice case. I'm not going to deal with this. But she keeps bothering him, so um, he's going to wear uh, her out. It might mean something like, she's going to put me to shame, because it literally means to give a black eye. Of course, when we call it a black eye, you might see be seen as the person who has been gotten the better of uh, against an opponent. Um, so there may be some kind of shame uh, in that, although some people certainly do wear a black eye uh, with pride because they were in a brawl and in a fight. But here it may have the idea of trying to avoid something uh, that would be perceived as negative. Now, the judge might not be too interested and in sh concerned about shame if he has no care about others and may not care what other thinks about him. So it's not really an issue for him to feel shame. But uh, he is he is obviously thinking that something is going to happen. She, he, he feels attacked. You know, this woman is so intense 
on getting what it is that she wants, and she just doesn't stop, she may end up actually hurting me. So um, it's an interesting uh, expression, interesting concern that he has. Uh, let's notice as well, the, the, the widow never does address the judge with any respectful title, doesn't call her judge, um, and so that in itself may indicate she doesn't care, you know, if he, I mean, he doesn't care what people think of her, well, she certainly is not giving uh, him any kind of honor, and he may not want honor from other people or don't care about whether or not people honor him, well, she's certainly not uh, honoring him. Notice that the uh, widow kept coming. Uh, and so she keeps coming is also indicating this kind of persistence. It's, it's ongoing. So is the woman, widow's cause just? Well, we don't really know. Um, she thinks she's asking for vindication, which you know may indicate that she thinks it's just. Um, it, but it may not be the, the same thing uh, as justice. And the fact that he's going to grant her request even though it might not be justice, uh, is bad news, obviously, for the adversary, who is left kind of out of, out of the picture. So in the literary context itself, uh, we see uh, here in Luke, um, we might want to ask how are women, and particularly widows, pictured in Luke Acts. So there certainly are concerns. There's a number of single women um, in Luke Acts. And um, they are certainly seen as people who can be voices of re revelation. Um, they can be seen as people who are to be cared for by the church. Um, in other words, they, they are more vulnerable uh, individuals. Of course, there is this tradition within Israel uh, um, in the Old Testament where God has a concern for, for widows. God is a protector of widows, and justice is measured by how one treats the vulnerable, like widows and orphans. Um, it does appear late in the, what we call the Lucan travel narrative. It goes all the way to chapter 19, uh, where in, it's in the Lucan narrative, uh, Lucan travel narrative, uh, that we are getting uh, Jesus' teachings to his disciples about how to be a disciple. Uh, more immediately, it appears right after Jesus' warning about the unexpectedness of the end of the age. And this is where Luke has placed this parable uh, with this issue or concern about the unexpected end of the age. So Jesus is drawing near to Jerusalem, his time with his disciples uh, to teach and to train them is coming to an end. Uh, and so we're getting this kind of being ready for an unexpected end of the, of the current age. Luke tells his readers that the parable is told so that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. So here we, we are given by Luke the reason for this parable. So a lot of scholars will detach the parable from its liter literary context here in Luke and seek out other uh, meanings for the parable, but if one is going to keep the meaning uh, that Luke provides, well, there it is in verse 1, and then uh, also kind of with the saying uh, from Jesus after the parable in which um, he says, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off. I tell you, he will see uh, that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So we, the what is both before the parable and after the parable indicates that at least Luke sees the parable uh, as talking about persistence in, pay, in prayer. Um, and having faith that God is a good judge. Hulk Green says that this parable is similar in form and content uh, with the parable of the friend at midnight, and yes, um, this idea of coming and the person kind of avoiding, and it's um, the way in which the parable is acting and making one think about not only prayer, which is a big 
uh, issue or theme in Luke's gospel, but also the idea of what one thinks about God when one is praying. So within Jesus' ministry context, Jesus did teach his disciples to come to terms quickly with their accuser. Um, and uh, here, so he does have some kind of uh, concern about the courts. He says, come to terms with the accuser so that you don't go before a judge. So the idea that judges you know, are not trustworthy, uh, therefore try to stay out of courts. Courts, you know, tend to rule in favor of the the wealthy, the powerful, the the elite. So if the poor or the poorer uh, end up going to court, they may be uh, in big trouble. They may not find the courts much on their side. Jesus was asked once to teach his disciples to pray. So the concept of prayer is as well a part of a world Jesus ministry so that Jesus might give stories uh, teaching about prayer. Uh, or talking about what one thinks about God when praying, that seems to fit that, that context. And Jesus also taught his disciples to anticipate God's justice uh, to be dispensed in the age to come. That is, um, we do have teachings that indicate Jesus wanted to make sure that his disciples understood uh, that uh, God's justice was coming, uh, that their faith would be vindicated, even though they might experience from their adversaries injustice currently. It may be looked like justice is delayed. Uh, justice will not be denied. Uh, this is uh, uh, oftentimes seen as an illustration of what's known as a call the Homer argument. So in a call the Homer argument, uh, this is where um, some one thing is compared to another. So usually something light or, or minor is compared to something major. And so if this is an illustration of a call the Homer argument, it basically means if in a situation like this where a judge, a bad judge, uh, is going to eventually give justice or vindication to the widow, how much more, in the language of call, call the Homer, how much more will God, who is a just God, uh, grant to his um, uh, hit his people the justice. And particularly the idea of here, it may be the idea of justice with God's intervention into the, uh, in the current age to bring about the age to come. Uh, since, you know, he's talking about um, God bringing justice um, and, you know, about the Son of Man coming. So the Son of Man coming is this language of the ending of one age before the age to come arrives. So uh, what about lessons from the parable? Well, um, the lessons that we are getting from Luke, at least, be reading it in, in the gospel, uh, God will respond to the needs of his children and bring about eschatological justice soon. So this is not just about, you know, Pray to God for anything that you want. In the context of Luke, it is about eschatological justice. It's about bringing an end to the present age and its evil uh, and its hardship and its suffering at the hands of the wicked and bring about the age to come in which God reigns in his kingdom through his Messiah. And so it's that eschatological justice that will be uh, granted. Christians should be persistent in prayer uh, that God will vindicate the, the righteous uh, with the justice that will come when Christ returns. So uh, for Luke and Luke's audience, that's really the, uh, the, the idea that God is going to vindicate them um, when Christ returns, when the Son of Man comes, uh, and so then uh, justice will be found. Uh, just raise up here last of the way in which uh, Amy Jill, Jill Levine reads the parable. Uh, she's wondering if maybe that the intent by Jesus here is to force us to cross-examine how we stereotype others. In other words, you know, is, we oftentimes want to see the, the widow, we want to stereotype her as weak and vulnerable. Well, she may not seem too weak if she's going to give this judge a, a black eye. Uh, she doesn't seem too vulnerable. She has the time to go out and pester him. She, in other words, she's not 
so poor that you know, she's out trying to work or take care of her needs. He's, you know, she has the luxury, as it were, to go and hunt him down and keep asking him. Um, and so she might seem much more aggressive type of person. And so instead of being a, a sweet, innocent little uh, widow, stereotyping her that way, you see her as um, someone with a great deal of kind of strength and, and resolve and forcefulness. And we oftentimes might see judges as as bad. Well, maybe this judge is not that that bad. Um, and, um, you know, he's making a decision. He seems to be making a decision that any one of us would, would make. Let's do what we need to do to get rid of inconveniences in our lives. Who, who wouldn't make a decision like that? Uh, that's what he's trying to do. Or it might make us about the legal system. Do you trust the legal system? Well, in this case, uh, the legal system is going to have a judge rendering a verdict that's not based on justice. It's based upon uh, a woman who just bothers him, and he wants the, that to, to stop. So there's not much uh, justice in that legal system. Uh, or uh, fairness, even the, what, what is fair? Because, again, we never hear from the adversary, and so we don't know if what the, this widow is asking for is, is just. It just may be vindication. So Levine wants to see that possibly the, the parable is trying to upend the way in which we stereotype others. Now, I find this a creative way of reading the parable. Of course, what she does is she detaches it from the Lucan uh, context and tries to imagine what it might have been by Jesus before Luke supposedly domesticates the, uh, the parable by placing it in its setting and giving us words, kind of introductions and some words of Jesus a afterwards, um, and therefore shapes how the parable uh, to be read. So uh, it's a creative way of, of reading the parable, but I'm not particularly persuaded that this is the way, this is the kind of thing that Jesus uh, talked about. Did Jesus go around um, telling stories or giving teachings about stop stereotyping people? I think Jesus himself times it looked like he um, sees people you know in in general terms so I'm not so sure if he went about telling people to stop doing that kind of kind of thing if I had see if I could see clear teaching of Jesus that uh, explicitly told people stop stereotyping well then I would think Levine has uh, more grounds to stand on to read this parable in that way so we'll uh, and our look at the unjust judge with that.